hello everyone. Thanks for coming over here. And I would like to thank uh, ICQMT team for organizing this talk. So today I'll be talking about tuning exciton complexes in two-state pilot WSC2. This has been published recently in PRB. OK, let's start. OK. So uh, it's been a, like more than a decade. So uh, TMD and uh, 2D materials has been uh, discovered. So most of the popular 2D material is the graphene. So we have already heard about it. So it has a very high mobility, and it has very semi-metal. It has many interesting properties. So people have found it's very interesting, and still people are researching on the graphene. So apart from graphene, there are also uh, other kind of 2D materials, like TMDC, which is a semiconductor, HPN, which is an uh, insulator. So we have the whole spectrum, like metal insulator, uh, as well as a semiconductor. And we, we can use these materials to have some very interesting properties, especially in the atomically scale device. So then people thought about what will happen if you actually put one of the 2D materials on top of each other. Because since these materials has very uh, interesting properties at quantum limit, so if we actually put these materials on top of each other, we can play with the atomically Lego structures. So that leads to very interesting property. So this uh, paper, where uh, this paper is published at Nature Nanotech from our lab, so uh, one of my senior, he find out if we put graphene on top of molybdenum diselenite, then uh, the optical conductivity is very high. So people can find ultra-fast photo detection in this paper. Uh, then if you put uh, like any kind of heterostructures, you have vertical heterostructure. And already graphene has very good quality material, but if you put graphene on top of HPN and encapsulate it, then obviously the mobility is more than like uh, around 100K or so. So o overall the system is more robust and also the mobility is also high. And also, this is also another paper from our group. This is a twisted uh, bilayer graphene, where it's uh, in plane a cross belt thermal conductivity has been discovered. So, although uh, all the heterostructures are fine, uh, people are effectively researched on this. But then comes uh, uh, the new era of physics, which is the Moray pattern. So uh, if you actually rotate one atomic layer on top of each other at some particular angle, you will find some long scale uh, interference pattern, which is called the Moray pattern. That actually modifies the band structure, and overall properties of the lattice is also modified. So yeah, this uh, all crazy stuff is actually started from 2018 from Pablo Giralo. So he find out if you put one layer of graphene on top of each other, and make some twist angle around 1.1 degree, you will find superconductivity as well as correlated MOT insulator. Okay, so it's not stop over there. People actually uh, effectively research on this. My collaborator, uh, like uh, Manish Chen's group, he find out uh, this has been published in PRL. He find out not only graphene. If you put uh, two TMDC material on top of each other at some particular angle, that also leads to very interesting properties. They also have flat bands, and obviously, apart from graphene, uh, this flat bands has some range, so you don't have to put at some magic angle. It has some wide range of angle. You can actually play with the angle, and obviously, the flat bands are more stable than the graphene. And obvious, and if you see the with the angle, uh, it is uh, different near zero and near 60 degree because of the crystal limit uh, symmetry is already broken. And the bandwidth is almost comparable to the twisted pilot graphene uh, uh, around 20 milli electron volt. And if you increase the angle, obviously the correlation will reduce. That leads to effective bandwidth enlargement. And so obviously that's the case. And similar to graphene, uh, from Pashupati's lab, they have found out the correlation states. And if, I, I'm not sure if uh, to see there's a, uh, a large range of angle where you can find this secondary peak. This is a correlated peak. And if you see the phase place from the temperature dependence, you can find out, similar to graphene, it has some uh, neighboring uh, superconducting state as well as insulating states, OK? 
So the main interesting thing about TMDC is it's not just uh, we uh, people are doing uh, like uh, transport measurements. You can also do uh, optics measurement. I myself do both transport as well as the optics. So here I'm mainly talking about the optical measurement. So obviously the main uh, problem of TMDC is the contact rays is really high. It's the order of if you put normal chrome gold deposition, it will uh, uh, the uh, resistance is around one mega ohms. Okay, so that actually burden the all the correlations. So in that case, optical measurement is more superior than the transport. Okay, so people has find out more exciton in WAC2 structures as well as the linear crystal states is because of the high correlations. Uh, then also broken mirror symmetry they have find out with the uh, linear Stark effect and stripe phase that is the breaking of the rotational symmetry, okay? So uh, this is the more landscape, this is the theoretical simulations from my collaborator. So there they have find out key if you actually change the twist angle from low to high angle, so this the overall, uh, this is uh, the color bar is basically interlayer spacing, okay? So the, the darker one is the triangular lattice, if you see, and the bright spots are basically uh, where the interlayer uh, distance is large. It's because since it's a more pattern, it will have some uh, high symmetry stacking. So this uh, singular patterns are basically uh, telling us is the A stacking where the interlayer spacing is large because of the Coulombic repulsions. And if you increase the twist angle, obviously the incommensurability of the lattice is also large because of that uh, high stability regime, that is the AB or BA domain, is basically shrinks. So after some time, it almost vanishes, and at some higher angle, it's two layers are becoming like a decoupled layer, okay? And similar to the zero degree, the pattern is a little bit uh, different as 60 degree because it's called the Kagome pattern, it's the Japanese traditional pattern. So people have actually find this kind of uh, pattern through experimentally as well, uh, through STM and other thing. So here uh, the energy difference is different. So because of that, uh, the overall stacking is different. So because of that, the triangular pattern is modified near 60 degree, okay? Okay, so now comes to the experimental part of my talk. So before explaining uh, the experimental data, I just like to uh, show some uh, basic thing about the excitons. Here I'm talking about many multi-particle state over exciton. So exciton is forming when you shine a light, so electron can go from conduction band to valence band over here. Um, then obviously if you do PL spectroscopy, it's basically uh, probe the overall transitions, okay? So exciton, uh, normally that we actually see, that is the bright exciton, but for WAC2, the lower, because of the spin orbit coupling, is actually split the conduction as well as the valence band. Obviously, valence band splitting is large as compared to the conduction band, but here the lower valley is basically uh, forbidden because of the spin selection rule. So that is called the dark exciton. To actually probe the dark exciton, you need to break the symmetry of the lattice through the magnetic field, as well as if you have the large aperture size system, then you can actually probe uh, the dark exciton as well. Because dark exciton, the in-plane, uh, sorry, out-of-plane dipole moment, so because of that, the overall radiation is near the in-plane, okay? And uh, since we are talking about twisted structure, uh, twisted structure, uh, the most exciting part is the indirect exciton, because it actually tell us what's the valley uh, information. So uh, the best thing about TMDC is, is if you actually go from monolayer to bilayer, it actually changes from direct to indirect semiconductor, and according to your twist angle, the overall value is modified, okay? So through our experiment, we can actually uh, probe the value information of the system, how the band structure is modified, so yeah. Uh, apart from the exciton, uh, we have also trion, this is a three particle system, and for WAC2, we have bi-exciton, that is a four particle system, okay? When two exciton, when the overall density of the exciton is large, they actually bound to each other to form a more stable system that is called a bi-exciton. And if you change the overall density of the lattice, then uh, the bi-exciton is uh, actually bound to one electron and actually make a charge bi-exciton. That's a five particle system. 
So in this talk, I'll be talking about like two particle, three particles, four particle, and five particle systems. Okay. Okay. So that's the device structures. So we actually twisted two WAC2 on top of each other, do lithography to make a leads, uh, make a back gate. So the silicon dioxide itself is dielectric, so we use the silicon dioxide to actually dope the system. Okay? Uh, here's the optical image after doing the transfer. So we have, we have the luxury to having all the regions in the single device so that we don't have to compare with, uh, to make another device to compare it. Because it also depends on the fabrication, the overall disorder, and other things that also hamper. So since it's all the in same device, so we don't have to worry about that. So we have the twisted regime. Here the monorail regime. Here is the bilayer regime. Okay, and the twist angle is large, that is 20 degree. Because in my previous publication, what I have found out that Raman uh, uh, Raman spectroscopy is almost uh, insensitive to high twist angle. But here we have found out still we can actually probe the correlations. So <coughs> we also use the second harmonic generations to uh, verify the twist angle over here. And you can see if the twist, uh, twisted region, the overall intensity is large as compared to monolayer and bilayer. Obviously, it depends on the crystal symmetry. Since bilayer preserve the mirror symmetry, the overall uh, polarization is very small. So that's why the second harmonic signal is small because it depends on the nonlinear optics, okay? And from this polar pole, we can easily see that the overall twist angle is near 20 degree, okay? So here is the raw data of the monolayer WS2 as well as the twisted WS2. You can see uh, we have additional peak and very interesting result as compared to monolayer, okay? So this X0, I'm just referring the overall what are the excitons are? X naught means the bright exciton, normal exciton. X minus is the trion. Double X minus is the charged by exciton. And D, we are referring to the defect peak, okay? And for the twisted bilayer, we have additional peak. X naught, XX, we have found for the first time because XX is very fragile. Uh, you couldn't find out without using the HBN encapsulation because obviously. Uh, silicon dioxide is a very um, bad kind of dielectric because of the overall uh, defect density is large. So that's why overall peak uh, is basically broadened, okay? But still we have find out for the first time this uh, neutral exciton in our devices. And we have the trion. Uh, this XI is the indirect exciton that I mentioned. And we have another two peaks. These are called phonon replica, okay? Uh, phonon <coughs> replica is basically uh, phonon assisted uh, transitions. Okay. So these are the color plot of our data. This is the monolayer and bilayer. If you see, uh, we are changing the gate voltage to tune the overall density. And if you see, uh, the positive means we are actually doped with the electron, and negative means we are doped with the holes. And from the color plot, it can clearly see uh, there's an intensify of the charge by exciton with the electron side. It's very simple because if you dope the system with electron, they will try to bind with the exciton to form a higher order particle set that is more stable. Uh, in between, we have the trion at the negative side and positive side trion at the positive side. So at higher uh, doping density, this trion is basically uh, for uh, actually combine with the exciton to form the charge by exciton. So that's why at large density, its intensity is basically reduced and overall oscillator strength of the charge by exciton is basically increased, okay? This is for the monolayer. Similar for the bilayer case, we have find out and uh, addition to the monolayer, we have the uh, indirect uh, exciton, okay? This is around 1.55 electron volt. And we have seen now uh, some pockets of uh, intensity of the indirect exciton overall the, the gate voltage is might be related because since indirect exciton is directly correlated to the uh, phonon replica and there will be some electron phonon resonance at some uh, great voltages. We need theoretical calculation for that. So now comes the interesting part, the twisted bilayer WAC2. You can clearly see the difference 
from the monolayer as well as the bilayer. We have many interesting peaks over here. So first of all, we have find out like what I mentioned, we have find the neutral exciton over here, neutral by exciton. Uh, you can see from the, it's why it's called the neutral exciton, that's also simple, because it only stays at the charge neutral regime, okay? And the excess minus is the charge by exciton. You can see why it's called charge by exciton, because it only stays near the electron site, okay? Uh, then we have the normal, uh, uh, normal uh, bright exciton, and we have trion as well as the positive trion, and we have the indirect exciton as well as the sharp phonon replica. There are two phonon replica we have find out, and interesting thing is the ho whole indirect exciton as well as the phonon replica is vanishes over the electron side doping. That's a very interesting thing. And um, so these phonon replica are basically two phonon process because recently there are some paper published, uh, theoretical as well as experimental on this phonon replica. They have find out key, obviously this, uh, if you see the overall energy change, it's around 19 milli electron volt and 17 milli electron volt from excess minus. So that is not possible with the single phonon process. So that's why the most dominating part is the two phonon replica, okay? And another uh, thing like what I mentioned, the asymmetric doping dependence. The, all the peaks are basically vanishes to the electron side. Why? I will uh, explain later. As well as we did some uh, power dependence of this uh, PL. So these uh, are actually mentioned over here, the overall um, gate voltages, so negative 70 means it's highly hold up. Negative 10, slightly hold up. Positive means, positive 30 means you have electron drop. And 90 means highly electron drop. You can clearly see how the peaks are evolving with the gate voltage. So it's a very highly sensitive system to the electron, uh, to the doping as well as the optics. And if you change the power, it actually varies with the power very, uh, beautifully. So XX is the exciton. So if you change the power in the microwatt range, you can clearly see it's a linear fit, okay? But however, XX is not linear. It's a super linear fit. And it's already theoretically predicted as well as many papers are there. If it's a super linear fit, there must be many charged particles. So that's why it's a, it's a indirect like a confirmation that it's a uh, by exciton, okay? So we also uh, did some theoretical calculation, my theoretical collaborator. They did uh, uh, this uh, calculations of bilayer WSE2 as well as the twisted bilayer WSE2. This uh, right-hand side uh, calculations are basically in the moray brillois zone. If you project it in the bilayer case, you will find out this. So this is the projection density over here from zero to two, this is normalization. So after uh, doing the calculation, we have find out key, obviously, uh, since this, the twist angle is near 20 degrees, so overall hybridization is uh, small as compared to the normal bilayer case, okay? So that's why there is upward shift of this conduction band minima, that is the Q point, okay? This conduction band minima, there is a uh, modifications, okay? And we uh, directly find this out if you compare the bilayer uh, spectrum with the twisted bilayer case. We have find out there is a around 100 milli electron volt dual shift as compared to the bilayer case. Okay. So this can be understand schematically. Okay. So this is a schematic normal, just schematic for the twisted bilayer as well as the bilayer case. So this is a direct transition overall 1.735. And this is the indirect transitions, okay? So you can clearly see if we plot these two together, you can see there is overall shift over here, okay? So overall shift is around 100 MeV. Don't go to the figures over here. And if you uh, see why there is an asymmetric gate voltage dependence, we can see over here. So if you have a normal, uh, sorry, bilayer, normal bilayer case, 
the overall energy difference is high at Q point at K point, okay? It's more than uh, around 200 milli electron volt and more than that, okay? But if you have a twisted uh, WSD2 at uh, around 20 degrees we, that we have find out, overall uh, difference between the Q and K value is right now reduced because the correlation is small at highly twisted devices, intermediate twisted devices. So because of that, the Coulombic repulsion is hybridization is also small. So this valley splitting is totally dependent on the hybridization. If the hybridization is small, the value will be going up. That's what we have find out. So if you shifting the Fermi level uh, to the electron side, for bilayer case, it will never reach the K value, okay? But for the twisted value, you can simultaneously prove the Q and K value. So when you actually simultaneously prove the Q and K value, obviously the direct transition is dominant over the indirect transition. So that's why after reaching some gate voltage, it will vanish, okay? We also did some uh, simply a simple model because obviously if you actually want to calculate the how much the formulable is shifting in this TMD structure, you need very rigorous calculation. So I just uh, did some simplified model over here so this is how we calculate the overall shift, okay? So we have this uh, silicon, uh, highly doped silicon, uh, uh, like a silicon substrate. Then we have 285 nanometer silicon dioxide, normal silicon dioxide. Then we have twisted WSD2 device. So we can think this is a capacitor. This is a normal capacitor model, okay? So uh, we know that uh, like the for simple capacitor, the capacitance will be like Epsilon uh, A by D, right? Epsilon is the overall dielectric constants, okay? So uh, we know that total charge is Q equals to CV, and from there we can get the uh, overall density over here. So here is a plot of the gate voltage versus density. Uh, if you change the gate voltage, obviously the density is also changes. Positive means you are actually inducing electron to the system. Uh, it's basically linear. So if you need uh, like, everything perfect density, you need to do Hall measurement. But since these are optics measurement, we don't need to go the Hall measurement. But yeah, it's almost similar, okay? This is a linear model. So we, we can get the uh, overall density through the gate voltage. And it's a call, uh, like it's a, we actually define this as alpha. This is the coupling factor to the gate voltage. And we can calculate the overall density, okay? And if you have the density, now we just simply apply the our freshman physics formula. So, so obviously we are doing the whole, all the things at very low temperature. So overall density can be calculated at density of state multiplied by the Fermi Dirac distribution function. And we know that uh, for the 2D materials, uh, that's we can approximate at very low energy to the parabolic band structures. And if you put all of them, you can easily get the overall formula. Shift. Obviously, we have simplified the model. The, and we can clearly see that uh, through our limit. So we can push the gate voltage till 100 volt. So after that, it will start leaking. So we can't go below that, above that, okay? So till 100 is almost similar to the 110 milli electron volt formidable shift. And if we go back, we can clearly see that uh, the distance between them is around 200 MeV. That is larger than the overall shift. That's why we are not able to probe simultaneous valley, but for the twisted bilayer case, uh, we have this. And from the temperature dependence, we can clearly see how that is different. So uh, you can clearly see the in the twisted uh, bilayer case is dominated by the indirect peak, but uh, here is already broadened. Okay, and for the both case, uh, for n type, is mainly dominated by the uh, charge excitons, okay? So you have fitted uh, through the temperature dependence to get the binding energy. Uh, the XX minus is the charge by exciton. We have fitted through the normal, uh, like Boltzmann uh, equations. And from there we can get uh, from uh, binding energy near 14 MeV. That is theoretically experimentally uh, similar that we have observed. But for the XX, we have different, little bit different model. So we use multi-level model. So there, there are two processes is going on because if you increase the temperature initially, 
the low energy state, the, the, <coughs> the low energy stress is basically quenched. That actually leads as activation energy, but after high temperature, it's basically quenched, the normal thermal broadening. So we use two parameters to calculate the overall binding energy that is around like 16 MeV. That is also similar that what we expect. Okay, that's the conclusion of uh, my talk. We actually observe many body correlated state in monolayer, bilayer, as well as twisted bilayer case, and low temperature field reveals high order excitonic state, including neutral by exciton. And in the twisted bilayer, XX is mainly dominant in the P type regime whereas uh, the excess minus is dominant at the n-type regime. And through our DFT as well as the experimental findings, we have found out that the trivial Q valley is basically shifted to Q prime valley and also is dominated by the, as also verified through experimentally. And these are my collaborators. So I'm from Quantum Technology Group. So this is my supervisor and this is my collaborator. Uh, this is a theoretical experimental collaborator, Professor Mani Chen, a student, and Professor Varun Raghavanthan from uh, EC department and his student. Okay, thank you. Uh, sorry? Oh, yeah, we have questions. Yeah, sorry. So very beautiful results about okay. these exciton complexes. Um, in one color map, when you were showing these um, PL results as a function of the gate voltage, mm. I noticed uh, one feature. This, this, one. this, this really, this, one. this, this, yeah, exactly yeah. this one. This decaying yeah. feature yeah. of this charged by exciton as a function of the doping. Is this yeah. well understood? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's because uh, at higher density, this oscillator strength of the trion basically converting to the bioxide. That's why it's the X minus is basically vanishes after some gate voltage and is overwhelmed by the bioxide. And another thing is at very high doping, the bioxide is also dominated by the charged trion, X double minus. Okay. I see. These are all verified through magnetic field dependence. Thank you.